Hello everyone out there in TV land. Welcome to Visual Radio. Today is July 3rd, 2014. My guest, all the way from Los Angeles, Valerie Carries Venet. Hi there. Hello, Joe. It's great to talk to you in person and not on the phone this time. I know. Yeah. It's wonderful to meet you. Finally. Yeah. Finally. Same here. Yeah. Um, welcome to Winthrop. Welcome to Boston. But you yeah. grew up in Boston. Well, the Lowell well, area. Pretty close. Pretty close to Boston. Yeah. Lowell was the uh, first town in the United States that I lived in. And you uh, came to Lowell from Ellis Island. Well, um, yesterday I went to Ellis Island and I found out uh, what happened because there's a little discrepancy. It was um, in 1924, Ellis Island was closed. No one came through. But there were other ports apparently that people came through and they were sent to Ellis Island if they were troublemakers. Okay. And of course, I was a troublemaker. And today we're in the same boat. I was, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was sick, so they sent me to Ellis Island. I was told that I had the measles, but I don't know. You know, maybe that's what's wrong with my noggin. So, oh, I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with your noggin. Yeah. But here you are back again in 2014, and you visited Ellis uh -huh. Island yesterday. I did. It was very emotional really was. I, I really, when I saw it, I just choked up. You know, it was um, really, I, I just thought of what my poor parents must have gone through. And because uh, I was, you know, four years old. So I think I was corrected by my cousin. I thought I came here in 1950, but it was 1949. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So it was 1949 and I was four. And of course, I'm getting your Facebook feed, and I'm seeing these beautiful photos yesterday. Oh, so you get to like, yeah. like, like, like. They're uh -huh. beautiful. I, they were just little phone photos, and um, from the from the ferry. So uh, I'm glad you like them. I didn't get a chance to see them because I ran out of battery on the way back in the rainstorm, and then the um, what do you call them out here? Free? They're not freeways. Highway there, and a yeah, that was backed up bumper to bumper. So it took us five hours to go from uh, Ellis Island to Hartford. Yeah, it's it's the way yeah. of the world today. Yeah, um, it's amazing that we're watching this photo upload from you, and you're not watching it yourself. Yeah, so I know, isn't that amazing? It, and it, they didn't look like coming off of a camera. They looked like beautiful photos. Oh, good. Yeah. That's a good thing to know. I'll see them later. Yeah. So, as a young child, you went to the beaches mm -hmm. here and such, but then your mm -hmm. father got a job in Hollywood. Well, he, I think that, um, I think we were, I'm not really sure, but I think that he wanted to come to Hollywood and to Los Angeles. And um, I, he took me on a, a television set when I was a little girl after we came to um, Los Angeles. And uh, I forget the name of the show, but it was about firemen and it was it. Can I mention the channel? Yeah. Yeah, it was KTLA uh, Los Angeles and we get it on channel five. And they were filming and that was one of my first inspirations to be there in front of the camera. I wanted to do that. Interesting. And then my other inspiration was uh, Mickey Dolan's Circus Boy, because I used to watch that. So there was a show called Circus Boy. Yeah. And uh -huh. Mickey Dolan's of the Monkeys. Mickey Dolan's of the Monkeys. He was a little, little tiny guy, and he had a elephant, a pet elephant, and the elephant's name was, I think, Bimbo. And uh, I. You know, I loved it. I thought I wanted to be on television too. Now, did your dad work that show, Circus Boy? No, he uh, was working on the other one at, at the, about the firemen. I wish I could remember it because it was a popular show. You would remember. No, maybe you wouldn't. But you're, you're did, you ever young. Meet, did you ever meet Mickey on the set? Oh, over when, there? when we were little? No. 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 That was the end of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was the end of it. But my, it was the same station? My, 
Um, for a Mickey Circus Boy? Mm, I don't know. Oh, maybe not. I, okay. Yeah, I don't remember. But that's yeah. interesting, parallel mm. careers, because your dad's working on yeah. the one show and Circus Boy with Mickey Dolmes. I did not know he had a TV mm -hmm. show. Much like right. Peter Noon in England, he had done the soap yeah. operas. Oh, uh-huh. You know. Um, yeah. So then take us to, what was your first taste of Hollywood? When, um, for yourself as you an know, actress. You know, it was, uh, it was always in my heart. I always kind of knew that what I wanted to do, and nothing else seemed to work. So um, I was working downtown Los Angeles, and I was working modeling eyeglasses. It was a half-day job, uh, after-school job I managed to get. And I was a receptionist. I think I was 16, um, almost 17 years old. And um, so I was working, I was at the front desk for modeling these eyeglasses for opticians. And I think it was a setup that one of the opticians brought in a friend of his. And uh, I was typing and he said, have you ever thought about being in movies? And I went, well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, his father uh, turned out to be the head of talent at 20th Century Fox. Excuse me. So I had a lot of help, and um, I'm really, really thankful for it. Um, the man that discovered me, his name was Michael McLean. He was best friends with, uh, I almost said Jim Brolin, James Brolin. Oh. And, um, uh, we used to double date and had a lot of fun, and um, we were all struggling actors. And uh, I just um, love those people, you know. So it's like in the Rock Hudson book, he says Lana Turner being found in a sweater shop, in a, in a um, ice cream shop, <laughs> was a publicist's uh -huh. dream. But yeah. this really did happen to you. This really, it really was the Lana Turner yeah. in the ice cream shop. Routine. It really was. <laughs> Only it was eyeglasses, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was just very, very lucky, you know. And then um, I remember Michael saying, "Now don't be disappointed because there's a lot of actresses that, you know, come into Hollywood and they don't make it and they don't, you know, um, do anything." But Lo and behold, I worked, you know, uh, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot with his help, and I uh, got to work with a lot of wonderful, wonderful people, little teeny parts, but I was on the set a lot, and so I learned what to do, you know. And you were around some major, major names. I was. Do you, do you remember so your first movie? Mm -hmm. I do. The Hank Williams story. Oh. Mm -hmm. 1964, I think, yeah. It must have been fun, it must have been exhilarating. Yeah, yeah, 1964. So did you have to audition for it? Mm -hmm. No, um, they were so small parts that they were uh, <laughs> really small parts, you know, but I was a nervous wreck, I remember. I, I had to have my clothes just perfect. Uh, it was a 1940s, I think, setting, and, and I was just a, a basket case. So, but Interesting that it'd be a music picture, where oh, music has always yeah, you're right. followed you you're right. your whole career. Mm -hmm. Or I followed, I, yeah. Well, you've had this parallel music film path. I have. Is, yes. Yeah, yeah. So after Hank Williams, what? Um, Throw some at us. Well, I, I worked on Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. I worked on... Um, a movie called Dear Bridget, with where I got to uh, meet James Stewart, mm. Glennis Johns, Billy Moomy, who I saw the other day, all grown up. Billy Moomy was he yeah. in New Jersey? He was in uh, the ca at the California Bloodlines um, forty-five year reunion. Mm -hmm. And Billy Moomy's a uh, bloodliner. Yes. Now, and now, he sings beautifully. Oh, oh boy, does he sing and play the guitar beautifully. And I just, you know, because he was so little tiny guy, when I met him, I just wanted to throw a receiving blanket around him, pick him up and carry him around, but now, I didn't. 
Yeah. I'll fast forward a little for our okay. audience. Uh, John Stewart had the album California Bloodlines. Yes. And John Stewart wrote Daydream Believer for the Monkees. Yeah, well, yeah. He wrote it. He and wrote the monkeys, Daydream Believer, but they picked it up. They picked it up. And then they changed a word in it. Ah. Mm -hmm. But uh, John Stewart had this album, California Bloodlines. Um, was your husband involved with that album? Yes, he produced it. Nick mm -hmm. Vinay. Nick Vinay. My old friend Nick Vinay. Mm -hmm. I knew Nick before I met you. Yes. Uh -huh. Through our yeah. mutual friend. Yes. Harriet Shock. Dear uh -huh. Harriet's a guest frequently on the show by phone. Beautiful Harriet. I love yes, her. Yes, I do too. She wrote the big hit for Helen Reddy, Ain't No Way to Treat a Lady. Uh huh. But That's she treats right. you like a lady, right? Oh, I just adore her. I'm going to see her when I go back. She has, she's cooking chicken and pizza, and we miss each other. So, um, you know, we haven't seen it, but, you know, we get busy. Everybody has their own lives, and, and we get separated, but we're going to see each other. We promised. I was over her house in 1991. It was May. She has a wonderful house, doesn't she? It might be a different one. 91? In, um, 23 years ago. Oh, yeah. She's been there a long time, though. Uh, off of Wilshire Boulevard? I don't remember. Let's see her address. Is. I, was with, I was with the girlfriend of P.F. Sloan, who wrote Secret Agent Man. Uh huh. So Jamie and yeah. I went to see Harriet, because Harriet was my friend. And okay. well, actually, I met Harriet the day before. Now we're really good friends. But uh, no, I did. We weren't friends at the time. I met her at a convention. She invited me over to the house because I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I was a huge fan, yeah. and we've become friends. And She's I met Nick Vinay through Harriet. Harriet, yeah. Now I've met you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the we circle. have a mutual friend that you knew forever, Spanky McFarlane. That's right. Yeah, Spanky's um, uh, one of my best friends, and um, she's one of my best we're guests. Very, very. Close, yeah, very close. She's one of my best guests. Yes? Oh, yeah, Spanky's a great guest. <laughs> we taped her in Connecticut. Uh -huh. She was here oh, for the Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, Harriet, uh -huh. Spanky, all your friends oh, have been guests on my all show. all right, all right. You're the Johnny Come Lately here. Yeah, what, t what took me so long? <laughs> well, you've been on by phone. Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to go back to your career, but the monkeys. Okay. We, I, I found these. I got these free. You can have them if you want. Yeah. Would you like them? Oh, yeah. They're yours. I would love them. So Are you kidding? I got <gasps> them at a library book sale where you can pack your bag. Am I in them? I don't know. But I'm going to read this to the audience. The 60s television series fully restored from the original 35mm prints. Now, Valerie is the sixth, the fifth monkey. And she, the song Valerie, written by Boyce and Hart, mm -hmm. inspired by Valerie Vinay. Um, the funny thing is they restore them for the prints, but now VHS tape is, um, it's antiquated, but monkey's tapes are valuable. Yeah. And if you have room in your well, briefcase. I'd like to see them, I do. You know. Uh, I will make room. See, they, were, they called to me, you're at the library book sale, and you pack it with books and CDs, and I said, oh, Valerie would love these. Uh-huh, I would love they them. They called to kidding? me. Thank you. Yeah, and so I knew exactly yeah. where they were when you came to town. Oh, it's wonderful. And there's um, love it. two episodes per, per. So there's, ep eight. Eight. there's a good chance you're in. Uh -huh. Good chance, yeah. But at least you have these uh, these great momentums because VHS doesn't really, people don't really, they're on eBay and yeah. stuff, but you don't find them as much anymore. No, no, you don't. And I love, and I, I love have all a machine. Formats. Oh, good. At home, I'll have to transfer them to DVD and too. And and I can transfer them, right? Wonderful, yeah, because they wonderful. look like they're mint. Yeah. And if they were oh, transferred okay. from the I original... Better, then I better... Yeah, they look like... And it's Rhino. You were just talking about you were talking yeah, to your friends Rhino. at Rhino. Uh-huh, yeah. These yeah. were on Rhino. I love it. Thank you. The fellow at Rhino said to you, or the woman... I will... Um, I will that the audience is more sophisticated today. Yeah. Meaning that they want to know every nuance of who worked on this... Absolutely. ...who directed yeah, I can't it. can't fool the audiences anymore. Which I've I think is great, because it, you know, uh, very deserving to, you know, mention all of the musicians, which I forgot my list to mention the mu musicians oh. that I was just with. Which was in New Jersey? Mm -hmm. Connecticut? Where was I? Pennsylvania. Beaver Town. Beaver Town, da Pennsylvania. Davy Jones. It was a, it's a... It's on a fairgrounds in Beavertown. That's where Davy lived. 
um, one of his places, and uh, that's where he had some horses, and that's where he loved that little town, and I can see why. It's a beautiful, beautiful little town, and um, we celebrate his life, and we also try to raise a little money for, uh, to keep the herd going. Um, Davy's daughters are such wonderful people, and uh, they're taking care of, I think it's 15 plus horses. So that's a big uh, oh, responsibility. Yeah. And, uh, and they were so his we Davy raised Jones a little family. money, and I, yeah. His horses were yes, his family. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he now, were they the in horses. one area or in different states? I think that he had them in a couple of different places. He had a, a place in Florida as well. So he had those, and um, and so uh, this uh, it we had music and food and a picnic atmosphere, a very American picnic atmosphere that's really really wonderful, casual, and um, and free to the public and free to the public and the bands. Oh my goodness, the bands are fantastic. We had the Monkey Files, the characters, the Blue Meanies. I hope I'm not leaving anybody out. Um, John Rojinski with the Monkey Files, um, Gary Owen with the Blue Meanies, Danny Salagi. With the characters? With the characters. I'm on his mailing list, so Are that's right. Are you really? Yeah, forever. He's fantastic. I've been on wow. his mailing list, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I get on these lists, but I'm yeah. on the characters mailing list. Yeah, that one, wonderful. We had so much fun, so much fun, and they're really showmen. They're so good, and uh, I and they have thank a reverence them for dedicating. They have a reverence for the yeah, music. They do. And for Davey. They're very good, very yeah. good guys. Yeah. So, so you uh, had we're fun. Th we're thinking of having it again next year, so I hope that uh, people come yeah, and we'll help free. celebrate. It's it, free. Yeah. It's free. You just come and have a good time, and yeah, so it'll be good. So, uh, did 